Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one, Sakatuya, written by Lost War. Rick Peck found himself in a dire situation. His ship was currently being held by pirates, and he and his crew were locked in an empty cargo hold. They had nothing with them besides the clothes that they were wearing when boarded. How had this happened? The pirates boarded during the crew's sleep cycle. His suspicion was that Moby, the Fenny on sensor duty, had been sleeping too. If they got out of this alive, they were going to have a discussion about this. He had woken to find himself staring down the barrel of a plasma rifle. What is worse, they had been boarded by a pirate crew of Denari. They are a light-bodied Vavian race with hollow bones. They looked like a bunch of overgrown budgies, though appearing adorable and bit bird-brained at times. They are known for their utter ruthlessness. Getting your ship hijacked by pirates is bad, but having a bunch of pirate parakeets do it was beyond embarrassing. Generally, this race was the butt of jokes, especially when people talked about them on pirate crews. The overgrown budgies kept at it because they had a few natural advantages in space, he mused. That is, when wicked inspiration hit him. So long as his ship and theirs were tied together, they were sharing the atmosphere. His ship actually had the stronger environmental control system. Half of his crew was human, including him. So he needed to be strong to handle their waste, skin, byproducts, and overall foulness. He turned and surveyed his crew, his eyes finally coming to rest on Norman Barman. Norman was an EVA and engine guy. He had been on ship captain at one point, but got in trouble over some diplomatic incident. He tended to be a disgusting individual who drank too much and made questionable decisions when drunk. Rick doubted there was anything the man could do that would shock him. Rick smiled as he realized Norman would be perfect. Norman, when did you do laundry last? The captain asked. He knew Norman was not the best about it. The guy either didn't notice the filth about him, didn't care, or used to keep it away the rest of the crew. Knowing Norman... It was likely all of the above. Fuck you, was Norman's response. Norman, I am serious here. When did you wash your clothes? Rick patiently asked him again. Damn it, Rick. You may be in charge of this tug, but if you ain't noticed, we've been imported by a bunch of fucking canaries, and now you're gonna start worrying about my hygiene. What are you, my mother? Afraid the damn undertaker gonna find I got a racing stripe. Okay, everyone, when was the last time you washed your clothes? Rick plaintively asked. Everyone looked at him confused. A chorus of today and yesterday's filtered in, to be broken by a week from Moby. Shaking his head, he waited to hear Norman. Quietly, Norman mutters something. Damn it, Norman, I'm trying to save us, Rick finally yells. Fine, probably a little over a month, I think. Uh, how does that matter? Norman says. Rick just takes on an evil grin. This could actually work. See, Rick knew Norman had a problem with foot fungus from the ship's medical doctor. He knew this because the doctor complained nonstop about the smell of Norman's feet. Looking at Norman, Rick, with that wicked grin, May I have your socks? The entire crew is staring at this point. This just seemed insane. What could Rick possibly be planning with Norman's month-old dirty socks? Shaking his head, Norman began unbuckling his boots, pulling his foot out, everyone in the room immediately hit by the odor. Norman, I only need one, Rick quickly amended. Norman cast a glare at the captain. He peels off his sock. Dead skin and sweat still clung to the inside of it. It was a wool sock, designed to go up to the mid-calf. But as Norman pulled it off and dropped it on the deck, it made an unnerving splop sound. The disgusting thing, moist with stored sweat, dead tissue, and smelling worse than a carcass in the middle of a summer in the tropics. It also had a disturbing and unexplained glow of blue and green upon it. Most of the crew at this point rushed to cover their noses. A few were gagging, not being quick enough. Moby was even complaining he could taste it. Poor, sensitive alien Rick, sarcastic thought. He moved across the cargo hold to pick up Norman's biological weapon but just couldn't as the soggy, moist, smelly mass appeared to move and was triggering a gag reflex. Damn it, Norman. You're gonna have to handle this thing. 
How could you possibly have a sock this nasty? Well, I was wearing it when we visited Jalo, he said with a disgusting grin. Rick couldn't help but shiver. That was well over a month ago when Norman was captain. Going over to the ship's environmental control and life support system, the ECLSS, Rick pulled out all of the filters and the air control. Turning to the crew, he recommended everyone use one and hold it over their nose and mouth. With a nod, he turns to Norman. Drop it in, he says in a nasally voice, still holding his nose. It's not that bad. This isn't going to work. Norman mutters as he drops it in while shaking his head in disbelief. Moments later, they can hear muffled squawks coming from above. They had a sound of panic to them. They could hear the Denari pirates panic jerk as they raced towards the cargo hold, desperate to get to the environmental controls. Rick and Norman were busy holding the door. The struggles, chirps, and pecking on the other side of the door kept getting weaker and weaker. Finally, the sound stopped, leaving only silence, and the sound of crew members gagging. Rick looked around and realized most of the non-human crew were hunched over, looking an unhealthy shade of green. He quickly told Norman to retrieve his vile sock and put his boot back on. Once the filters were back in place, they took a few minutes for the fresh air scrubbers to purify the cabin air and fresh air to start making its way into the room. When they opened the door, Rick was shocked to find the bodies of 14 Denari pirates piled outside the cargo hold doors. He heard Norman start laughing. How in the hell do you know that that will work, Rick? Shaking his head, Rick explained, the Denari have a couple of advantages in space over humans. Being an avian origin, they have lightweight bodies, which means Denari ships can carry larger crews and they handle themselves well in zero-g environments. But their greatest advantage is also their biggest weakness. The Denari are the most efficient breathers in our galaxy. Norman looked at him blankly. Rick, in exasperation, clarifies. While this gives them a far greater advantage in air consumption over other species, it means bad air kills them quickly, like a canary in a coal mine. He was still chuckling about this later when it hit him. If he reported his ship was boarded without a struggle by parakeets, it was going to make them a laughingstock in the galaxy. So in a burst of creation of mission, Rick simply stated that during a pirate boarding, Norman Sock killed every pirate present. As he submitted his report, he couldn't help but chuckle. This means that Norman officially has the most badass suck in the universe since it had 14 confirmed kills. End of story. Story number two. The 60-year sniper duel written by Adriel. Humanity has a bad habit of winning fights in really strange ways. I heard an old human proverb, something like, Creativity killed the cat by crushing a space station into it. Or something like that. I keep getting different versions. The one involving the drum of butter and 350,000 watts of... Uh... Never mind, um, I'm, I'm getting off tracks. Anyway, one story always stuck with me. It's the story of the 60-year sniper duel. Somewhere out in the middle of no man's land, many, many light years from anything important... Two ships landed in system I'm quite confident no one has ever bothered to name. One human, one Zeno. They ended up landing on different planets. When I say landed, I mean they landed really fast. Explosions probably happened. One of those landings where you really hope your side of the ship doesn't hit first. Now the humans really hated their alien neighbors, shooting your ship down and making you live the rest of your life on some obscure chunk of ice is a good way to make new enemies. So, how does a group of angry humans enact their revenge on someone on a different planet with no chance of flying over there? Easy. Easy. You take apart your ship and build a nice giant gun. Then, every eight months or so, when the orbits are nice and close, you get a couple of shots off. Then you repeat a few hundred times until those filthy Xenos are nice and dead. Why am I telling you this? It just so happens that a human is in the other room. You try to mate with his wife. And that really pissed him off. Oh, and he just found the blender. Uh, good day. End of story.
I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.